When designing lots on subdivisions, it can be difficult to maintain connectivity between the road and the lot. In this mini-series, we're going to show you how to connect Civil Site Design Kogo points to your lot design, creating dynamic IPs that are locked to a reference, such as a road. If the reference changes, the points update, giving users updated IP elevations. First of all, we are going to be creating grading strings using the polylines that are drawn here dashed. Um, and we're going to be placing points on those particular polylines. It is important that you don't have grading strings that overlap and are on top of each other because if you're going to be creating a model and they have differing elevations along the same boundary then the model will have difficulty interpolating which elevation is at the top and which is at the bottom. So to resolve this we've very simply just created offset polyline boundaries for each of these lots and you can see we've even done the same here for this group of lots. And we have a video in the description which explains very quickly how you can use a CAD tool to generate the initial polyline of your lot boundary and then a civil site design tool found in the pipes tab which will actually globally offset all of your polylines by a nominated amount into your lot so that you don't have um, an overlapping string. Secondly, if you're going to be creating Kogo points that are referencing a string, and in this case our Kogo points at the frontage here will be referencing our road string, it is important that you have sample lines at the locations where the references occur. So for example, if we were to look at this corner of lot 12 here, when a Kogo point is created and told to reference the boundary code on road 1, the nearest available sample line is actually here. Um, so it will mean that it will use the elevation found at that particular location. So to resolve this, again in the description of this particular video, we have a video which explains how to create sample lines using a layer. So for speed, what I've done is I've taken a copy of these boundary polylines and put them onto a brand new layer, and that layer happens to be called Lot Sample Lines. I've then frozen that layer. If I thaw that layer, you can just see they've turned up in the background and they are exploded. So on this layer I have lines and as you can see here I can select them. At every single end point of every single line on that layer I can have a sample line created which saves me having to go through the process of adding extra samples manually. To very quickly show this process I'm going to go to the roads tab, resample and click on row 1. I'm going to choose use layers and then all you do is you pick the layer which contains the lines and in this case I've already got that chosen and then how far to search left and right obviously if you put a very big value it could pick up the other end of the line and that could be in a different position so it's important I'm only picking up the frontage line work so I'm searching 10 meters left and right I want to add these sample lines by layer and include them with the others click apply and exit click OK and the software will now read those endpoints and add sample lines. This means that when I create Kogo points, I'm now getting an accurate elevation and reference for my road design. Lastly, when you run the points by polyline tool, points will be added at every vertex of your polyline. Now don't worry if you don't have all the vertices that you need on your polyline because we'll show you how you can manually add extra points onto your design afterwards. But just for speed, we are making sure that we have all of the vertices already set for our polylines when we're going to use the tool.